Uh, my name is Hugh King. I'm the East Stanton Town Crier. And the reason I got hooked up with local history is I was hired by the Historical Society to sit in front of Clinton Academy and wait for people to show up. Then I would take them on tours. Well, nobody showed up. So I went to the library and got the trustee records and started reading them. And then I got the town records and I started reading them. And that's how it really all began. Good day, here we are in the incorporated village of East Hampton and I'm standing in front of the Hook Mill built by Nathaniel Dominate V and others in 1806. Townhouse, the meeting place of East Hampton's oldest governing body, the East Hampton Town Trustees. What kind of people came to East Hampton years ago? It's July 7th, 1893. The disturbance around the outside of Clinton Hall on the night of the Catholic dance as you read, uh, if you listen tonight, you're going to find out that many of these buildings were either uninsured or not insured at all. Someone comes to East Ham, okay? The man <laughs> had a full beard and parted it in the middle and combed it to both sides. That's got to be Barron's from the Osborne house. That came over on the Mayflower. You mean Richard Barron's made that? Yeah. Oh, no wonder they... <laughs> I realized that history was important. You know, I know when I realized history was important. When they were having the 200th anniversary of the Constitution, and I went around to the junior high kids, and they didn't know anything about the Constitution. I go, what? No. You know what the Bill of Rights? No. So I said, okay. Maybe this is why it's important. People don't know it. The superintendent of schools in Riverhead, they traded me. They traded me for a librarian. So the librarian went to Riverhead and I came to teach fifth grade in spring school. The luckiest thing that ever happened to me. Though my name is Chapman, they call me Appleseed because I planted a lot of apple trees, a very noble Spelling doesn't count. Doesn't they wanted they wanted to have to spell every word. If you tell them it does count, they just go ahead and do it. I know that you didn't get an A in math this year, but come on, let's no, come on, Pat. Don't say we've lost somebody already. We haven't even started. Teaching is so great because every day is different. Every single day is different, and then you get to start over again in September with another whole class. So every year is different. Here's the beauty. You pull into the stoplight by Town Pond. This is what you're going to see. You make a left. The first place you see is the Thomas Moran House, one of the most important landscape painters in the entire history of our country. It's a National Historic Landmark. Then you just go up a little bit, look across the graveyard that has gravestones going back to the 1690s, and what do you see? An 1804 windmill. Then just go down a little bit, you have St. Luke's Church. You have Home Sweet Home, you have the Mulford House, you have Guildhall, the library, Clinton Academy, and then you go back up to, and you're gonna get to the other windmill in the village, the Hook Windmill, and then you're gonna wind up at the Dominey Workshops. They're gonna be put down back to North Main Street. How many towns can you come into and see that many historic buildings still standing? Now how about that? Collins, Alan Snyder, and the bells are ringing, hear so ye, it's going to start ye, any ye, second now. The 50th anniversary parade has begun. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, East Hampton's history settled 1648, but there were people here before 1648. The Montauk Indian Nation. We are steeped in history, you're, you're correct. And that's why that terrible, awful, the Hamptons. We're not the Hamptons. We're the upscale, fashionable, trendy, and unaffordable people. 
lived. We are East Hampton, Amagansett, Spring, Sac Harbor. We all have a different history. Well, maybe nobody will care. That's the other thing that's important about Stony is trying to make people care about it. Care about it, you know? People gave money for the Moran House, you know? You want to make people to care about these buildings, our history, because that's what we should be known for. Like if you had one impact on the town of East Hampton? Keep, try, keep trying to find out more. We don't know everything yet. So you need to keep asking questions. You need to be, keep finding new sources of information. That's why all, so many of our old people are neglected. They're wonderful sources of what life was like in the past. They're, they're eyewitnesses to history. I did not spend enough time with my father talking about the way things were. I did make a tape, though, for LTV. It's in your archives of my father and of myself sitting in the studio and he took me up and down the streets of Amagansett. We had five dairy farms in the village of Gansett and uh, if you learn how to milk cows, you could generally pick up a dollar bill there. You know, I learned um, many, many things from my father and I learned uh, uh, about the, the attitude towards women. Uh, I watched my father uh, treat my mother and my grandmother with reverence. I think I also learned about an attitude towards people. My father was always for the underdog, and, and he treated everybody with respect. And my father, who couldn't become an actor or, or couldn't become a teacher like I've become, uh, certainly made it possible for myself, along with my mother, uh, both of them really made it possible for me to, to do the kinds of things that I'm doing in my life that really are not anything like the things that they've done. I was able to take over the job as director of Home Sweet Home and the windmills in 1999. In the operetta, he writes the words to Home Sweet Home. And on May 8, 1823, at the Covent Garden Theater, Home Sweet Home is sung for the first time in the world to, to see. And then the song becomes more famous in pain anything he ever did. So remember, there is no place like the gardens here at Home Sweet Home Museum. Please come and visit. Have a good day. And the other thing about Home Sweet Home is the gardens, you see. And what's great about me working there is the village hired Loretta to work on the garden. So we've been working together there since 1999. And as you know, when you get older, there's no guarantees. So I'm trying to spend as much time together as possible, because Tomorrow is not promised, or somebody said that, right? It's not promised to us, not now. If you're 35, you think differently, uh, but not when you're 75. Mid pleasures and palaces, though we may roam, be it ever so humble, there's no place like home. Have a great day. Let's go.